for Johnson and pre Dover away on Sunday. Gary, how frustrating has this week been in terms of having to manage the players? But well, I suppose no one's missed more than one game, have they? What do you mean? Well, if, if you just split the, if you just split the teams, if yeah. you just split the squad, then oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no I've got you, It's not yeah. like they've missed actually two, is it? No, but exactly. But you have to take every opportunity to play the games because of the weather in this country, because of our pitch, because of sharing our pitch. You know, and nobody seemed to have taken that into consideration other than us, Kidderminster and Oxford City, uh, because we all discussed it properly. Um, and if you don't take them opportunities, you lose that opportunity. So at least we would have played one game, because the game on Tuesday against Kidderminster, of course, would have been on. Now, this is going to happen for a little while. There's going to be re more replays. might not just be us. might be a team that we're playing. Uh, in the in the trophy, um, so anyway, they <coughs> they made their decision. I, I don't think I've heard uh, a good argument for putting that off. People are saying, you know, this that was two games we've missed now. We're supposed to play, but it wouldn't have been. It would have been. It would have been one, and uh, we'd have got the, the the other game in this week, which you know, so we could have afforded to have lost one anyway. But what we can't do is afford to lose any more games now after next week because it will build up and teams like Woking that are in the FA Trophy, Gateshead are in the FA Trophy. Uh, well, there's eight, I think there's about six, seven, eight teams that we've got to play yet that still are in the trophy. So when it comes round to the Saturday and the Saturday um, where the two trophy semi-finals are, and then there's only April to go. There's, there's, there's going to be a fixture pile-up. So I still, I still ain't had an answer. For, no one's going to give me the, question, uh, the, the answer to my question. Is who made the decision and who did it affect? Who would have it affected? And it's so you can see it's a little bit f I'm, you know, frustrated by um, not playing games because it's not... Is that the answer coming now? Yeah. Pro well, I'd like to think so, but no. It's too hard to answer your question. Uh, anyway, so you wound me up. I came in really, really <laughs> happy this morning, and then you wound me up ready for this, didn't you? Uh, I can't even turn my phone off. Right. Off. <laughs> I mean, it's not a fixture backlog yet, but that is what you want to avoid, obviously, isn't it? It's exactly what everybody wants to avoid, surely. Um, but uh, with, with you know, you try and manage every club is trying to manage uh, their own club, of course, and and that's what everybody's got to do. It's what you do, it's what you do for your papers and your radio and everything. Um, and we have to try and manage the season for our club, and. Uh, and that's what you do, and you, you do it with the best interest of your club at heart, and that's the same as any other club. So, you know, it's, it's just, I don't see how that was in the interests of the people that made that decision, when really it was in their interest to keep the game keep going, I would have thought. Anyway, ask me a football question. Come on, who are you playing Sunday? Let's get back into that. Dover, obviously, <laughs> Dover, you yeah. played. Dover, obviously, on on Sunday. Um, in a way, if the kiddie game had been on, Keen Harris, you know, that that would have been a really good game to blood him in. Dover, possibly a more difficult challenge. Yeah, it is. Well, difficult. What well, it is a difficult challenge anyway. Um, they've done very well with the shape, the personnel, um, their attitude towards games. They. They've done great, and what they've done is they've put themselves back in with a with a very very good chance of at least the playoffs, um, and that's credit you know to Chris Kinnear and, and his team because uh, they are a, a very difficult team to beat, as we found out when they came to Wadden Road. You know it was a, a very difficult team to beat, so it's going to be a good game because tactically it will be a very very good game. Um, and generally, when you play Dover, it's the, the better team that wins because they are hard to break down and you have to bring out your quality, but they've got some quality as well. 
So it's uh, I'm looking forward to it Sunday for the fact we ain't played for ages, but um, and the boys will be looking forward to it on uh, on Sunday as well. Not just because it's on the TV, but be because you know we're champing at the bit to to get a game in. You could go into the game second in the table. Would that make any difference to how you approach it, or you know, do you just switch off from that and just focus on what you've got to do in those ninety minutes? Well, so there's too many games to play yet to to worry about you know, being first or second. It just mean you know the you know, the rights will be in other clubs if 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 they're top of the league to sing we are top of the league. <laughs> We've been singing that for a little while now, anyway. So maybe it's time to have a bit of a rest and and be the chasers. But um, you know, if 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 that happens, then you. you you just got to go into the next game, trying to win it. There's no, at the moment, there's no going into games thinking a draw is a good result for for any team that's up there at the minute, and um, we're no different. So we got to go there for a result. Dover have got to look for a result because, you know, if they beat us, they will see a better opportunity maybe to go up automatically. You know, because they they're not right out of it. Um, but they're going to have to beat teams like us and Forest Green and Grimsby's if they if they get to play them. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll go into the game whether we're first or second in the same with the same tactic. We, we've got to go and win the game. And because they'll obviously be looking for the win to try and topple Cheltenham, does that actually give you more of an opportunity rather than if they were thinking right they're flying high, let's settle for a point. Um, well, I, I I don't think they can afford to draw, and we really can't afford to draw either. Now, we'll see how the game goes, and if we're 4-0 down and we draw 4 all, then I'll be quite happy with it, um, because there is a long way to go. But um, no, at the moment, we, of course, you're keeping one eye on other teams when they play. You'd be a liar if, you know, there's a lot of managers saying, I haven't even looked at the opposition's results. Don't bother me. Well, it does. I'm sure it does. So we're all looking at each other's results. and um, But the important one is your own result, of course. Having kept an eye on that and depending on how they do, um, it, at this moment in time, because they're our nearest challenges for us, Green. But, um, you know, it'd be very wise to, to, to get the result, whatever happens. How's the search for another centre-half coming along? Um, yeah, that was not the call. Yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> um, a little bit. If I do sign another player this week, I'll be able to tell you where it was all along the way, sort of thing, and why it's taken a little little bit of time. Um, but uh, you know, I, I can't say anything yet because just in case other people get to know who we're after and decide to join in. So um, anyway, we just we just uh, we need a couple more days and I'll be able to give you a, a little bit more of a definitive answer to that question. But if it doesn't happen, presumably Kian Harris is completely ready and, and raring to go. Well, yeah, but we, we, we need another one anyway. Um, I, I, I believe that we, we need three centre-backs uh, in case I want to play three at the back at any stage. And uh, at the moment, We've only got really two recognised ones in uh, in, in Kean and uh, and Paz. There are a few that can do the job. I know that for a fact because we've been testing them out, and um, just in case. So um, I'm not I'm not too worried about that. We we've just got to get our whole team game going. That's what we've got to do. We we we've got to get our shape and our flow and our pattern back and. Uh, We've been doing a lot of 11 v 11s in training to make sure that like the new lads uh, come into our way of thinking and I've had to scream at a couple of new ones just to get them into it quickly. Um, try and get them out of the under 21 type games that they, that Kean especially would, would be used to. Um, I mean, they have had in, in the curriculum, you know, in them under 21. So, but anyway, he's six foot four. And to be fair, he'd done all right with his heading. Once I spent a couple of days with him on the training ground um, doing a little bit of manly heading. And uh, I thought he did all right at Oxford City with his heading. I thought he won a lot of challenges. So, 
hopefully we've helped him already. James Dayton extended until the end of the season. Um, is there an extra spring in his step now that he's, you know, he's got that sort of that backing from you? I think so. I think uh, he's it's good for us, good for him. It's a it's a good mix at the moment because he's been unlucky. We will need him come the end of the season. We'll need that experience. But he's already trained with us now and been in all our meetings, so he's into our psyche. And it's very hard the closer you get to the end of the season um, to bring in somebody new and him understand me, our game. Uh, you know what we're trying to achieve, how we're trying to achieve it. So you don't want to be moving out now. Some of the lads, um, or hope, or you know, don't want them leaving either. Um, with the lads that have been around and, and know exactly what we're trying to do. So I'm pleased he's with us because I think the chairman said it yesterday, and he's right that we haven't quite seen the best of dates yet because of these little injuries that he's having. But he's a great squad member, team member. The lads like him. Um, he likes being here. He's a good footballer, so uh, he'll be okay. I'm pleased he stays. And any of those who've, who've been out injured of, of late back in the mix for this weekend? Uh, well, you've got the long term ones still, of course, with Murray, Brock Dickey, because we'd like to get him back and, uh, when that comes up, when he gets fit. But they're still a good month away anyway. Um, other than that, I think there's there's nobody really that that uh, has put themselves, you know, is ready. I mean, what outside of that, you've got Jordan who's injured. Who was you thinking of? Dan Holman, remember the chance? Sorry, well, I, the reason why I didn't mention Dan Holman is because he's fit. He's been training for the last two or three days, so I didn't have him on the injured on the injured list. So uh, he's fit and he's looked very strong and very sharp. So Charlton fans could see him for the first time in, in a red and white shirt. Yeah, they'll definitely see him, you know, whether he starts or not is another thing. Um, we don't know yet, but um, he's certainly done himself no harm with his two days of, of training. And it's sort of like um, bucked up the group, if you like, even the other strikers, because we need a strong squad, because not everybody stays fit for the whole season. And uh, they, I'm sure they see him as somebody who has definitely enhanced our squad. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Just looking back on the Dover game, um, you had to make yeah, at Wadden Road, you had to make some brave changes at half time to change the game as it was going. Have you learned something from that game in terms of the team shape and the, the way you're set up? Um, I'm not sure I've learned anything from that game necessarily. We, we we've we've had a good look at them, of course. We we've we've seen their last uh, couple of games and. And they have got a certain style that has done well for them, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, so yeah, m maybe you have one eye on, on them when you select your team and shape. So the, the question's right to ask. Um, whether I've learned anything, at the end of the day, I know that at half time, if things don't look right, uh, I'm happy to, ch but I have done for the last 25 years. <laughs> um, if it doesn't look right, then I'll, I'll, I'll give it a quick switch and give them something else to, to think about. Um, but you can do that anyway at Wadden Road, down the slope, a little bit of a wind behind you. You know, you can go a little bit longer, but still keep the quality and get more players running forward and just basically put a team more under pressure. And uh, that's what I can do at half time. Um, I wish I could do it at a start of the game sometimes because <laughs> it takes a while. Why do you always, does it take to half time to get your team sort of? Well, I always say because I can't get as angry as I can at half time before the game. So maybe I need somebody to wind you, you lot, come in and wind me up. Hey, I'll come in and wind me up before the game and, and we'll get them really started. We'll get them right going earlier. Will, will, will the early start make a difference? Will you be great you because it's early on a Sunday? Well, <laughs> funny enough, you have to think about that because yeah. your time clock is different. Mm. You, normally they're eating chicken and pasta, whatever it is, in a, in a pre-match. So uh, you have to be aware of all the time changes and, and judge it accordingly because there's no pre-match. It will be a bre you know, your breakfast. So they can't eat as big a breakfast as they would have done, you know, all them sort of mm. little, little things. But... Um, I said, you know, it's always nice to be on the TV, and I think the lads enjoy that. Um, hopefully, we don't lose anyone because generally, 
on a TV game that goes out to millions, including all the managers, scouts, etc. Sometimes somebody has a great game and you lose somebody. <laughs> um, that's happened to me on a few occasions. So, but you use that as motivation with the lads. You know, you want to sign Tottenham or Man United is a great chance, and uh, if we get a few million, then we'll shake your hand and say thanks. Just on the on the the, the break, you, you mentioned that the enforced break. You, you mentioned a lot of eleven eleven in training. Has that been good in a way, so you can almost start again, as it were, get yeah. back to what you, you you do you were doing best. Yeah, it's it's been like Billy Buckling with hard work for the last mm. few. You know, we had a bit of a meeting because. I felt the lads were getting a little bit frustrated as well with with other lads. You know, they're, they're a great group and you know, they, they love working with each other, etc. But I could see a little bit of frustration setting because their own games were a bit frustrating to themselves. So then you deflect a little bit, not meaningly, human, human nature, on the other players. And, and I just felt a little bit of cattiness, you know, nothing too serious. And so we had a meeting, and the boys had a meeting as well. And um, we've had a uh, we've had a really really good week, a real fun, hard working week. Um, uh, you know, it was like hard work in an atmosphere of fun and entertainment. <laughs> That's really what it was. And I'm hoping we take that into the game because we need them to relax a little bit, but play their game and still keep their work rate up, but in a more uh, cool atmosphere in their heads you know they've got to be a bit more assured as opposed to angry excellent